Hi, my name is Laura Jacobs, doTERRA Presidential Diamond and fifth U.S. founder. I'm so happy I could be with you via video and bring to you a message that is something I'm super passionate about and we could get together at this time and talk about the power of not only just essential oils but essential oil aromatherapy in regards to our emotional well-being or what we call emotional aromatherapy. Just a little bit about myself before we get started. I come from a background rich in exposure to wellness and well-being. I had a wellness center that I ran for 18 years where I was able to serve as a holistic health coach for tens of thousands of clients and working with them not only on their physical health but also their emotional sense of well-being through life coaching and other methods of simply creating a healthy emotional environment was truly some of my greatest passion and some of my favorite things that we got to work on together. So what we're going to talk about together in this moment truly again is something that I love to discuss, talk about, learn about, and for me it's forever an incredible frontier of discovery. Would you like to live in such a way that you actually feel ready for anything? And what does ready for anything look like? Well, first of all, we have to rally to every cause of our life, first and foremost, our attitude. Our attitude affects everything. It affects our brain chemistry, it affects the rhythm of our heart, it even affects our immunity. Now for decades, science and modern approaches to well-being have really had a tremendous focus on our physiology, really looking at what are the physical needs of the body in order to achieve wellness. The real irony is that our physiology actually begins with our psychology, how we think and what we believe. So in order to really have this positive impact on living optimally, we would first want to get in front of our ability to really take charge of how we feel and how we think about how we feel. So if we look into the body and how it functions and, and what is it doing to try to achieve this state of being, it's a word we use called homeostasis and it describes that the body's never ending goal is to constantly seek balance and equilibrium at all times irregardless of what's going on around you and changes that might occur. So if we're going to talk about homeostasis, let's go one level deeper and let's define it for ourselves. What is that? Well, information is constantly circulating in the body, and information creates intelligence. And so homeostasis is the capacity for the body to circulate, or in other words, to have an unimpeded flow of information moving at a very rapid pace, so that if you smash your finger, bam, your brain's supposed to know about it, so you can do something about it. If you're in a situation where you feel afraid, you want to rally yourself to the cause. Do I need to run? Do I need to fight? Is it not real and I need to talk myself down out of the tree? What is it? So our ability again to take in information, to rapidly process it and respond to it creates a higher level of intelligence. So this then would be our focus and what we would want to achieve in our efforts and what we're talking about here. Okay, so I'm gonna go after and kind of hit us all right between the eyes. Do you think anything ever goes wrong in your childhood? Okay, I know you're all laughing, right? It's supposed to go wrong. That's what childhood's all about. My husband and I have a philosophy that you spend your childhood acquiring all your weaknesses or false beliefs so you can spend your entire adulthood changing those and turning them into your strengths. So let's be honest, life happens when you're a kid. You know, and, and, and tough things happen. You know, trauma happens, abuse happens, betrayal happens. Just life happens. And so as a result of that, we respond to it. So, you know, put yourself in the position of something like that happening. Well, all of a sudden, we're going to not only think about it, we're going to feel about it. And we're going to start to have these responses that we're talking about. Not only, again, just in our physiology, but in our psychology. And it's this impact here that we really want to take a closer look at and how we can, again, become a greater partner in what's happening. So research has demonstrated that a lot of our chemical habits, how we think and how we feel, are actually linked to childhood. So let's talk about how that might happen. What if we're in a, a situation where it's stressful? And I'm not talking about once in a blue moon stressful. I'm talking about consistently stressful. And so chemically, we're going to have to rally ourselves to the cause. We're going to go into what is known as fight or flight mode. We've, we've either got to run away from that stress or tackle it. And so certain chemicals are going to be rallied to the cause, adrenaline, for example, so that we can be all there to survive the moment. 
Well, at that time, being happy, well, it's not so important, right? So your body's like, serotonin, it's not really important to me right now. And so if you get in this habit of being stressed all the time and needing those chemicals and your body's sucking those chemicals up to fuel its ability to withstand the moment, and you're getting out of the habit of uptaking serotonin and, and focusing on that part of your well-being, well, over time, that literally becomes a habit where receptor sites for serotonin can shrink and become unused, and we then get into a habit, and sometimes even an addiction, to a certain type of chemicals where our body becomes very habitual at having those running around the body. So what form does information come in? It comes in the form of what we call messenger molecules, or also known scientifically as ligands. So here's a couple examples. You ever heard of hormones? Yeah, of course you've heard of hormones, or steroids, or neurotransmitters like serotonin that I've already mentioned, or a hormone like adrenaline. So these are in fact uh, some of the categories. The largest category of messenger molecules are actually called peptides, which has everything to do with our emotions because that's the physical form that they're translated in in the body. So one of the greatest discoveries of our time was the discovery of the opiate receptor site. And so what was discovered is several things can fit on this site. So whether it's our own self-made morphine, which we call endorphins, or something again that comes from an outside source like morphine, or an opiate drug, they all fit on an opiate receptor site. And this is how the body would receive that information and therefore have a response to it. I think we can all agree that we get that these messenger molecules run every single aspect and system of our body. But what I'd like to invite us to agree is what we've often not recognized, and that's that our emotions actually run every single activity, action, and system of our body. They are our messenger molecules. So let's put that principle into action and see how it's gonna work. So remember we talked earlier about life happening when we were a kid and there's trauma or betrayal or abuse or accidents, whatever happens, well, what are we gonna feel as a result of that experience? Are we gonna feel like we need to defend ourselves? Are we gonna feel like we need protection? Are we gonna be afraid? Are we gonna be happy? Maybe it was something really awesome. Whatever it is, we're gonna to have to rally ourselves to the cause to respond emotionally. So naturally, as we think about what's happening, we're going to generate emotions and we're gonna rally our chemistry to the cause. And we're gonna learn all the while because we're learning emotionally. So we're gonna lay down tracks and expectations and even future responses are being trained in this moment, especially as these situations reoccur for us that will then cause us to get in the habit of how we're going to respond chemically even later in our life. So I would imagine at this point, as we're all considering the ideas that we're discussing here together, that we might want to ask ourselves the question, gosh, you know, I feel like I have a couple emotional habits that I'm not really fond of. Or maybe you would say to yourself, I think I've developed a couple chemistry habits I'm not really fond of. I don't like the fact that I tend to go to frustrated uh, without, you know, taking in more information and maybe I react sooner than I'd like to. And I'm not really fond of that habit. Or maybe I tend to go to fear or anxiousness more quickly than I would like. And I'd like to reprogram myself to perhaps have a different kind of response. So how could we partner with ourselves to get out of maybe some stuck cycles and actually shift our thinking and our beliefs and also shift our chemistry? So I have some amazing good news for you. The fact of the matter is that emotions are actually organic. They're literal substance because of the fact that peptides are circulating in our body. So we have this opportunity to really actually get involved with the process of mind into matter and matter into mind. We can involve ourselves consciously in the process of getting in charge, again, what we said from the beginning, being ready for anything, getting in front of our attitude, getting in front of our moods, rather than just simply getting behind an old habit or an old response. The beautiful news here is that receptor sites are not stagnant, that they have a potential for change. They can change their sensitivity. They can change their arrangement. And therefore, we have a biochemical potential for change. Now, along with that, in our limbic brain and our amygdala, there's something so important and something so incredible that's involved in this process, and it's actually our sense of smell. Do you know that our sense of smell is so important here for survival? Because how many times do you smell something, perhaps before you hear it or you see it? So very necessarily part of this structure of survival is our sense of smell. And therefore, entry into the limbic brain for aroma is vital. 
So straight through our nose, up through what we call our olfactory system or olfactory bulbs, which, hey, we already had the conversation earlier about receptor sites. There are receptor sites in the system of our body where we receive odor molecules. This sense has the greatest security clearance of any of our five senses. That smells go directly to the brain to give us that immediate amount of information to function with, to help us, again, survive and live and think and feel optimally. So if we could really partner with this capacity to use aromas as part of our learning, do we understand the power of that, let alone bringing in essential oils into our world? Because this is the beautiful thing. Messenger molecules come in two categories. They are one, what we call endogenous, things that are manufactured in-house. Endorphins is a perfect example of that. It just means inside or internally made morphine. But there's also what we call exogenous ligands, and those are things that come from the outside. And the beautiful news is that essential oils are exogenous ligands. They are messenger molecules. So either by inhaling them and smelling them, a very powerful way, as we've already discovered, to, our effect, to affect our emotions, or we apply them to our skin, diffuse them in our home, or even use them internally, we're bringing into our system a tremendous amount of new information that as it moves and circulates through the body, it creates new intelligence. And when we have new intelligence, we have new choices. We have new capacity to respond. So at the beginning we proposed, could we in fact pick our mood or pick our attitude? And what I'm in fact inviting you to discover right here and now is that by partnering with an essential oil and the power of aromatherapy, you can in fact partner with your own chemistry and get in front of it and choose your moods and choose your attitudes. So let's talk about some possibilities of what that can look like. So we have this wonderful new kit called the Emotional Aromatherapy Kit that consists of six different blends, specifically formulated and created to work in conjunction with one another to create really a balanced cycle of possibilities for a variety of emotional states. The wheel is kind of designed like a clock, so if we look at the top of the clock, the first oil that's featured there is a blend called Motivate. And the subtitle on the bottle is the Encouraging Blend. So what is this for? Well, have you ever found yourself in life feeling unmotivated? Huh? Maybe timid, maybe tired, uh, maybe like hard to rally yourself to the cause, or like mm, maybe you've been betrayed in the past by yourself or someone else, and you're just like not really wanting to show up. Maybe you're sleep deprived, I don't know. Well then reach for the Motivate Blend. It's gonna be marvelous for that. Now all of these emotional blends are designed to be used topically or aromatically. So how would you use your Motivate Blend? Well, you'd simply, you could put it on what we like to call our perfume points, you know, where we become the human diffuser. And all day long, we're smelling these amazing oils as they're dissipating in, in the air around us. Perhaps you want to stick it in a diffuser at your desk, perhaps while you're at your place of employment, or maybe while your child is studying. Motivate might be just the partner to, again, bring in new information, creating new intelligence in the body going, hey, I'm feeling more motivated. I can rally myself to this cause. I can do this. So in conclusion, when it comes to the Motivate Blend, if you're feeling like you've got a little too much of feeling anxious or distressed or maybe apathetic or lacking confidence or maybe even gloomy, that's the time to reach for your Motivate Blend. And instead, what you want to nurture, right, to bring in the influence you're creating in your body through the information of the messenger molecules, through the aroma of the blend, is going to be feelings of confidence and courage and belief and trust. You're gonna notice as you look at the wheel that shows us all of these blends and their relationship that we also have plant families that are featured. So in the Motivate blend, the plant families that are featured here are the citrus family and the mint family. So when you smell peppermint, for example, how do you feel? Do you kind of go, whew, like that? Like it just wakes you up? And then when you smell something like a citrus, you're like, Oh, life is happy. So if we put together, oh, I'm awake and I'm happy, do you see how that makes for a really great cause of I'm motivated? So I want you to keep that thinking in mind as we go through additional blends. Our second emotional blend we want to take a look at is cheer, also known as the uplifting blend. So now we've talked about plant families. Where does this one fall in in our will? In this case, it's a marriage between our citrus and our spices. So when we're going to want to reach for the cheer blend, is when we're experiencing perhaps a little too much discouraged or gloomy or distressed or somber, disinterested, maybe even bored. And instead, we wanna feel more 
optimism, bright, cheerful, positive, energetic. That's a great time to bring our chair in. How would you use it? You could diffuse it. You could put it on your body topically. The most important thing here with the emotional blends is to smell them. Because remember, we're trying to get to that amygdala and we're bringing in new information and we're laying down new memory. We're learning new things. We're learning new ways of being. Okay, our third blend, I might have to say it's one of my favorites. I actually love all of them, but this particular one, oh, mm, speaks to me. This one's called Passion. Now this is a blend between two plant families, the spice family and the herbs and grass family. So a couple of the oils to highlight in this blend would be those spices that you know and love well, which is cinnamon and ginger and clove and cardamom. Beautiful spices that all generate activity. Think about why would you choose something like cardamom in your life? Because it gets things moving, right? It's great for respiration. It's great for digestion. Well, it also can get us moving in life emotionally. Ginger, similar. Now, along with that, it's partnered with other amazing aromas like sandalwood and vanilla, and maybe an herb that you're not familiar with known as Damiana, also known for its amazing properties to, well, shall we say, light the passion. So whether it's emotionally needing to light yourself and rally yourself to a cause and be more passionate and show up and maybe be more brave or willing to do something exciting because maybe you're feeling a little too somber or disinterested, bored, discontent, maybe even bordering on bitter or angry, and instead you want to move to an emotional posture of feeling daring and excited and passionate and joyful, this is the time to reach for your passion blend. And again, where are you going to use it? How are you going to use it? It's all about smelling it, topically, diffuser. In this case, you might want to look to, to partnering with a carrier oil because with cinnamon and other spicy oils like clove, there could be a potential for a little sensitivity. And so you can simply add that to your application methods if you choose to put it on topically. Now for our fourth oil, as we're moving around our wheel, now we're down at the six o'clock part of our clock, we're at forgive. And this particular blend is a blend of not only those herbs and grasses, but also trees. So you're gonna find a wonderful array of ingredients in there. One that's maybe uh, more of a surprise and an emotional blend, which is thyme oil. And, and thyme plays a really significant role here in making this a powerful emotional blend, as do the other partners in this particular recipe. So with our Forgive blend, also known as our Renewing blend, what are we focused on here? So whenever feeling maybe some discontentment, bitterness, anger, ashamed, sad, grieving, guilty, or even judgment, this is the time to reach for the Forgive blend and to bring in more of an energy in your life of feeling contented, relieved, charitable, patient, accepting and even long suffering. It's such a beautiful blend. Now, as we move around our clock and we're over to around our seven, eight o'clock position, we're now looking at our console blend. And this is a beautiful marriage between the tree family and the floral family. So we start to bring in some floral aromas here. I bet for many of you, the aroma of ylang ylang, for example, is very distinguishable and is definitely one of the beautiful oils that you'll find in this blend, uh, along with other favorite tree oils. So think about when we've gone through something hard, something that we're grieving, we want to be consoled and, and therefore the name, right? Console or also comforted. So it's our comforting blend. And what, what are kind of the two things you need emotionally in that way? One, maybe you need to be stabilized or grounded. Maybe you need to retrust a situation. Something traumatic happened. Maybe there's a terrific loss. And sometimes it's hard for us to trust in the process of life. So we need to be regrounded and stabilized and our tree oils bring in that energy. But we also need to be uplifted and we need to trust in you know, life unfolding and continuing to be wonderful. And, and so the floral brings in that essence and that feeling. So your console blend is perfect for this. So if you're feeling perhaps ashamed, sad, grieving, hurt, worried, or fearful, this is the time to reach for console to instill more of a sense of hopefulness, perhaps heal a broken heart, uh, to create that healing in your life, to feel buoyed up and, and comforted as we talked about. Now for our final blend, as we make our way around the wheel, we come to a blend known as peace or also the reassuring blend. Well, have you ever felt kind of timid or scared or it's difficult to face something? Um, maybe not wanting to be somewhere. Maybe wanting to kind of like escape a situation or maybe even escaping homework if it's a child or hard to face a new day at work or whatever the case can be. Oftentimes we need to feel reassured. We need to feel peaceful. And remember we talked about with homeostasis that the idea 
is that life happens around us all the time. There's constantly things going on. There's always change. But if we can constantly seek this sense of balance and equilibrium within ourselves, this is again where we get in front of our attitude, we get in front of our emotions and our moods, and we can be ready for anything, whether it's schoolwork or being on stage in a play or giving a presentation or facing a new job or whatever the case may be. This is the time again to reach for this amazing blend. So whether it's feeling hurt, worried, fearful, anxious, insecure, or even apathetic, this is a great time to instill more information and intelligence about being, con about being composed, contented, peaceful, calm, and reassured. And there you have our six emotional blends that belong to this emotional aromatherapy family that doTERRA has created for us. So I want to leave you empowered to think beyond. You know, we've talked about these great principles. We have other blends in doTERRA. We have other single oils. So I bet you want to know, well, could I continue to apply these principles with other oils? And the answer is absolutely. Since the beginning, doTERRA has had four additional emotional blends that have been our staples and for many of us, our best friends for years. So I wanna remind you that we have a blend called Balance. It's very much a tree oil focus and it's there to help us feel grounded and stabilized in our lives. We have a blend called Citrus Bliss. Gotta love the name, right? We already talked about how our bliss is hardwired because it's a marriage between our physiology and our emotions. And there's nothing better than Citrus Bliss to bring in that feeling of euphoria or uplifting or cheerful. It's such a great, and we call it our invigorating blend. We also have serenity. Just the word itself reveals the blend, right? It's to help bring in a more serene, more peaceful feeling. So whether it's wanting to get a better night's sleep or remaining in that state of mind during our day, it's a perfect partner. And lastly, our final member of our emotional aromatherapy family is elevation. What a beautiful blend of amazing oils such as Melissa and citruses and things that come in and you know, you're starting to learn about these plant families and how they come together and create this magic. And we call this our joyful blend because we all wanna experience a greater state and a sense of joy in our lives. So I encourage you to create perhaps some sort of a collection for yourself. I have a special little kit where I keep all 10 of my emotional oils and they come with me when I want more of that type of energy in my life, they sit by my bed every night, in every morning, I reach for my emotional oils because I am doing exactly what I've suggested. I'm picking my attitude. I'm picking my feelings or my emotions right out of the gates. I'm not waiting for life to tell me how to feel. I'm deciding how to feel about life. So before I go to bed, I'll usually choose one or two blends to put on to maybe address what the day was like and how I want to feel when I wake up. And when I wake up in the morning, I choose it kind of like a perfume, right? How I want to feel for the day. What sort of mood am I in or what sort of mood do I want to be in knowing what's coming? And so I just want to invite you to have so much fun using your emotional blends. Now, lastly, let's talk about our single oils and what would we do with them? Because, well, in some ways they almost seem more complex because we don't have as much of a personality or a name assigned to them. We just know them by their plant family. So I want to em empower and invite you to start using some obvious things that are available to you to where you can learn how they're gonna serve you emotionally. So for example, let's say you wanna feel more soothed or more calm. Is there a single oil you can think of that might actually bring that energy to you? I bet you all thought of lavender, right? So I like to think of lavender as all things calming, like anything that's gone awry, I'm gonna reach for my lavender. And that's gonna include a mood. So if it has properties that are soothing and calming, well, by all means, it's certainly gonna play that way with you emotionally. If an oil is um, renewing, for example, frankincense is considered to be very renewing, all the way down to a cellular level. And you're feeling like, gosh, I need more of a renewing energy in my life. I feel like my tank's going empty and it's not getting refilled. Well then, reaching for a frankincense every day that consists, uh, you know, its primary or our largest ingredient falls into the monoterpene family. So learn more about your essential oil chemistry and the fact that monoterpenes have a renewing capacity. And so anytime I want more renewing energy in my life, then I'm gonna reach for an oil that brings in that kind of energy. Now, do you ever feel unsafe sometimes, like maybe a little naked and you wanna have a little bit more coverage or protection? Well, oftentimes that's really easy for us to think about with our immunity. Like I want to support my immunity. So I've got my, my shields on all day, every day, right? I'm feeling protected from, from things in my environment, from any environmental threats. But do we think about protecting ourselves emotionally or we may also feel threatened in that way. So by partnering with oils that are prickly, 
like a cinnamon or a clove, they help to provide an emotional barrier for us and they help us have more of a sense of protection. In fact, if I could just teach you a little bit more about cinnamon for an example, it's a bark. So I want you to think of it as a bark, you know, that you wrap around yourself and it's kind of like a blanket, just like it's wrapped around the tree. And on the outside, it's prickly. So anything that comes up that's unsafe, it kind of protects you from that. But because you're inside of that energy, you're relaxing and you're willing to be more vulnerable. So that would explain why cinnamon would be in a blend known as passion to where we maybe want to rally ourselves to not only being more inspired and, and passionate in life, but what if we want to feel more vulnerable and passionate in an intimate relationship? That's why cinnamon is such an incredible aphrodisiac because of the energy that it brings. So I want you to start thinking this way, where as you consider your single oils, it's really pretty easy to figure them out emotionally by just remembering what they do physically. And they just can't help themselves but rally themselves to the same cause for you emotionally. So I wanna invite you to have fun and to explore and to get into considering, you know, how could this oil benefit me just not in my physiology because I'm learning my physiology as a response, but how can it benefit me in my, my, my psychology, my thinking, my feeling, what I believe to be true? And how can I bring in new information into my body by bringing in exogenous ligands, or in other words, external messenger molecules that can immediately bring into my body new information. And uh, what's so beautiful about an essential oil is their permeability or their ability to permeate barriers anywhere in the body and how fast they can circulate. And literally in a matter of seconds, those oils are making contact not only with organs and body parts, they're making contact with your cells. And so every cell of your body, which is of course where the receptor cells are, are receiving this information rapidly and every cell of the body is getting a new information and supporting you in creating, again, an attitude of I can be ready for anything because what's going on inside of me is homeostasis. I'm able to maintain a sense of well-being because constantly my body, because it's so supplied with information and therefore intelligence, is able to navigate and move gracefully through the waters of life because I'm not so ill-prepared that I'm coming in more reactive. I'm coming in prepared so again, I can choose my response. So I invite you to make new habits, to form new beliefs, and to choose your chemistry and therefore choose your mood which therefore dictates how you feel and how you believe about life. It's been such a pleasure to be with you and share with you something that is so dear to my heart. And I hope it not only blesses your life, but you won't be able to keep it to yourself and you'll take it out and you'll spread that message to your world, whatever that is, because it deserves to be shouted from the rooftops.